Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey guys, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast. I am here with a new episode for you this week. And this week, we have Kevin Paramore on the show. Kevin works with Yale. He is their motive power and telematics sales and marketing manager. He is their expert when it comes to motive power and telematics. He's going to talk to us a little bit about Yale, uh, his experiences, and also, of course, he's going to talk to us about motive power and their telematic options at Yale. Um, you guys might have remembered that on one of our ProMat episodes, uh, we did talk to someone from Yale as well. Um, so he's going to give us a little deeper dive in some of the other offerings and solutions that Yale provides. Uh, so, Kevin, welcome to the show. How are you? I am great. Thanks for having me on, Kevin. What a, what a great first name. I know. Uh, we were just talking before uh, the show. You know, so many Kevins seems like uh, an industry I interviewing somebody last week named kevin it just keeps popping up i'm not sure what's going on <laughs> there you go yeah so why don't uh why don't you give us a little introduction about yourself uh tell us kind of what your background is and how did you get involved in this with um yale and kind of what uh you do for Yale, so people kind of understand where you're coming from sure so i've been with yale for approximately four years uh, I'm a dedicated resource uh, that started in our telematics business, uh, which we refer to as Yale Vision, the Yale Vision solution, mm -hmm. and uh, migrated and or, or obtained the mode of power area as well within, I would say, approximately two and a half, three years ago. And uh, so, again, have during this time, I focused on the technology progression, uh, mature, uh, the commercialization, uh, customer relationship building, and techno as the technologies both continue to mature. Um, so what, what we've done is built, built kind of easy-to-use tools to help customers or end users navigate to figure out uh, both the telematic solution, what's best for them, what insights are they going after within the data, as well as what mode of power source is right for their application. So uh, I'm a fairly simplistic person, and although some of these technologies can come across as very uh, complex, mm -hmm. we try to cut through some of that and, and work directly with customers to, to give them great results. Awesome. That's great to hear because, you know, some of these things, definitely they seem seem a little daunting sometimes when, uh, you know, people, especially, you know, in operations and distribution, material handling, you know, they're used to the old old stuff. So now all this new stuff is coming in. So making it uh, simple to understand is definitely uh, definitely key. So why yeah, and keep keep in mind we have a broad we have a very broad dealer network throughout the world, and uh, so as a manufacturer, you kind of have to if you want to commercialize or t or scale the uh, solution, you kind of have to make it somewhat of a simple solution, easy to learn, easy to repeat, and 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 uh, replicate. Definitely. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about I guess. For people that are not familiar, you know, what is what is motive power? What's telematics? What's uh, Yale Vision? Why don't you give us some detail about that? Sure. Well, let, let's start with uh, let's start with motive power. So okay. we have here at Yale something we call the power suite. So what that means is, first of all, for simplification, motive power is really any power source that makes the truck move, lift, lower, etc. So at Yale we pretty much have every source that has powered a lift truck uh, under our umbrella or we have skin in the game with each, meaning we have 
trucks that are powered by liquid propane. We have uh, compressed natural gas. We have trucks powered by diesel fuel, uh, hydrogen fuel cells, lithium ion batteries, lead acid batteries, thin plate pure lead. I mean, there's a lot of different sources out there that we kind of play with. And, and it's, it's not a one solution fits all. So uh, there's no one is best across the board. Okay. So really it depends on the customer's application and their need and environment that's going to drive them into the right source. Um, from a motive power perspective, we kind of pride ourselves our, on integrating these solutions into our trucks. So with that being said, we want to eliminate any type of, uh, uh, there's many different terms, uh, HM, HMI or UIM, uh, human machine interface or user interface machine mm -hmm. that gets suspended on the overhead guard or in some other place. We want it to be clean, uh, increase the line of sight for the operators, uh, keep safety front of mind. So it, with the Yale Power Suite, we also try to create a, selection process, right? So anybody can go to the Yale public facing website, yale.com, and uh, go through what we call the motive power selection tool. Okay. And really what it does is it prompts you for, you know, let's say five to 10 questions, and it kind of helps your end users find the best motive power source for their application. There's, there's some gray area in there, but keep in mind, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a good starting place. Okay, very interesting. So what, what are you seeing in terms of uh, people? Are you seeing people s looking for more energy-efficient options now, like moving to the, um, the lithium and hydrogen? Uh, what is really kind of the trend right now? So, so I would say, you know, the lion's share still remains within lead-acid batteries in the mm -hmm. electrification world. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's still quite a few of... Uh, internal combustion trucks that exist out there running off diesel or LP. Definitely. But looking at uh, electrification, I would say uh, lead acid still is the lion's share of the, the fleet that remains today. But as we progress, uh, there are some pains that come with lead acid batteries that have, have, have kind of converted some of these customers or pushed them to look for alternative sources, such as your you mentioned lithium ion batteries, mm -hmm. hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, as well. So I think the, you, you know, I think the major piece is it's not a one size fits all. So we, we try to t target uh, maybe two or greater shifts, uh, you know, ones that do experience lead acid battery pains as they are, those customers are more apt to look for alternatives that can lower their total cost of ownership or operations, as well as kind of create operator behavioral change. Definitely. So, now, when you're talking about, you know, you try to make them as built in um, from a safety standpoint and obviously um, operator efficiency standpoint into the machine. Now, if people are, you know, looking to maybe switch their power source, is that something that you work with them uh, as well on if they want to upgrade to something else or maybe they want to look at a different uh, source of power for the machines that they already currently have? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great call out. So. Keep in mind, our, our batteries, or hydrogen fuel cells for that matter, we refer mm -hmm. to them as BBRs, which stands for battery box replacement. Okay. So let's say, in theory, we have a customer running lead-acid batteries today, yeah. and they own their trucks, or they're in a long-term lease, and they want a way out of those lead-acid batteries. Yeah. Uh, we have a way to basically take that lead-acid battery out of the truck, put a either a lithium-ion battery, either a hydrogen fuel cell into the truck and basically have it operable. So you can almost keep your existing forklift and, and kind of change your mode of power source. Uh, so that, that's a great advantage for us in, in our uh, counterbalance trucks and our, our in riders and other pieces of equipment mm -hmm. where it's a simple rotation. Uh, so, so again, you don't have to buy a new truck per, you know, per se to just change your mode of power source. Okay, so you could just... Uh, and, and as I mentioned, yeah. it, correct, and, and there's a lot of integrations that remain in place. You know, from mm -hmm. a safety aspect, you know, you want to have your early warning systems intact, meaning uh, the most simplistic way to state this is if, you know, if you have a lead-acid battery and your lead-acid battery charge is going to 1 to 2, you know, 2 to 1 percent and you're about to run out, uh, lead-acid batteries 
typically kind of stall. So they'll slow down and they'll be kind of a, a slower rolling stop. Whereas your lithium ion batteries, when you go from 1% to 0%, that battery turns off. I mean, it's dead. Very similar to your, your uh, mobile device today, right? When, you, yeah. when your phone hits 0%, you're, you're yeah. done. Yeah. So, so from a safety aspect, we want to make sure that our, uh, any type of shutdown that's, that's triggered by a loss of power, we have a gradual slowdown that's in place so from a, to keep our operators safe in their uh in their day-to-day operations okay very interesting so now in terms of uh you know getting the most power out of the machine you know obviously uh, diesel propane is going to give you more power but what about in terms of from lead acid to hydrogen to lithium ion are you seeing that there's a power difference on the machine or is it maintaining kind of the same level of power for sure so there's a distinct difference between lead acid batteries as you transfer from lead acid to hydrogen fuel cells and lithium ion batteries. Mm-hmm. So there's no degradation once you make that conversion. So with a, with a lead acid battery, I always refer to it as you're opening up a remote control car after Christmas. You open it up and you play with it for 15 minutes and you love it. It's your yeah. favorite toy. But over that next five to 10 minutes, it starts slowing down, it gets sluggish, and you kind of put the remote down because you're done with it. Yeah. So same type of thing happens maybe in a different way, but on a, on a lead-acid battery truck, the battery degrades over time. So at the end of the shift, you're not getting the same power from that battery as you did when you first started your shift. Okay, so when you switch over to a lithium-ion battery or hydrogen fuel cell, it's constant output. So there's no degradation. You're getting the same power when you start as when you finish. Got it. Okay, okay so it's straight and through then the same you, way. Straight through, and when you're running a hydrogen fuel cell, uh, you know once you get to that a low fuel state, it's very similar to an automobile. So instead of having to charge it for let's say 30 minutes to on an opportunity or fast charge to a you know an hour or two on the charger, you take it to a dispenser, you refill it, and you're right back into your you know swing of things, which you know we can refill as quick as three minutes. Interesting. Okay, so it's almost like getting a tank of gas, kind of. Very similar, very similar to the yep to getting a tank of gas, and then your lithium-ion batteries. You're still gonna, you know, use the opportunity. You want to you want it to touch the charger as many times as possible because that's what's gonna, you know, very similar. To go go back to your uh, mobile device. Yeah. Touching your lightning cable on an iPhone. You know, you want to be fairly close to your uh, lightning cable at all times to kind of keep it powered up. Definitely. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, very good to know. So now your motor power. I mean, that kind of ties into your. Uh, telematics through the Yale Vision as well, right? Because you have Yale Battery Vision? Correct. So, uh, you know, it's funny. So we actually report uh, through our telemetry Yale Vision portal, every hydrogen fuel cell that's deployed has onboard telematics. Okay. And then, uh, as you just mentioned, we do have a Yale Battery Vision that can go on these flooded lead-acid batteries as well. And what that telemetry device can do is, it can report and kind of improve the behavior of your maintenance on your batteries. So you would want to put this on your fleet of batteries or at least a mm-hmm. sampling of the batteries if you were experiencing premature failure, if you are at a loss, you don't know how these things are, are, you know, how your trucks are coming in and there's no charge in the battery. So with this device, you can go in and kind of track are the batteries watered, proper water levels. Uh, What's the state of charge? Are they being equalized? Are they being cleaned regularly? I mean, there's a lot of things that you can kind of, um, what's the, did we miss a plug-in? So in other words, uh, has it been discharged and nobody plugged it in overnight? So you can no. go to the root cause of, of, of why these things are uh, short charging and, and failing prematurely. Okay. So you can actually see, did you say you can actually see when it's been plugged in, like how many times it's been plugged in? Correct. You'll see amps in, amps out. You can see it over time. So in other words, you can kind of see uh, a bar chart or a line chart growing as it's on a charger and then declining as it's off the charger and being used. Interesting. I like that because I've, I've dealt with in the past where, uh, you know, I work uh, as an operations manager as well. So, you know, I've had people where, you know, they come in the morning, uh, my machine wasn't charged and, 
you know, it's, I swear I plugged it in and you don't really know. So that kind of eliminates yep. Uh, yep. any question there of what happened. So I like that. Um, so now that's something that's uh, visible through the machine or it's visible through like a desktop, dashboard, mobile app. How does that work? Yeah, yeah so all of the above. So it is a cloud-based system. So yellvision.com, okay. you could access on your PC right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you can access it. We have a Yellvision mobile app. And, and all the battery, all the mode of power telemetry rolls into this. Everything's under one umbrella. So it, it's, it goes to the same place. So uh, leading into, I guess, yep, it, you want me to go ahead and lean into the telematics piece? Sure, yeah, let's get right into it. So, so from telematics, just to kind of define what uh, telemetry or telematics, whatever term you want to use, is, is if you think back to like the healthcare industry, Okay. Uh, I always think about, you know, you see a, a person laying in a hospital bed and typically they're hooked, you know, to machines by a bunch of wires. Mm -hmm. They're pulling off uh, through those sensors. They're pulling off, you know, heart rate, oxygen levels and various other metrics to monitor you. That's the same same thing as what we're doing really on a, on a lift truck. Uh, obviously, it looks a little different, but and it's also from a similar technology. You think about an airplane, the black box that resides on an airplane. You know, mm -hmm. they monitor flight data, uh, altitude, steering controls, and other things, so they can look for root cause of issues. Uh, they can also perform service you know, maintenance on those by the hours logged on the airplane. So in a lift truck world, we have the same thing. We have a black box that we embed in the kind of the belly of the truck okay. that connects directly to the onboard computer and records a lot of different information. So for... In general, it's, it could be overwhelming the amount of data that exists. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we try to make simplistic insights based upon things like, so in an in a internal combustion truck, if the key's in the on position, but the forks aren't raising or lowering, yeah. and the transmission's not engaged, so it's going, um, you know, not going in forward or reverse, we can call that truck in an idle state. So you can really look at the utilization, how you're using your, your fleet of forklifts. Interesting. There's uh, there's other benefits there's other benefits that we can uh, kind of dial in, but we really go after those main usage meters of the trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, the engine odometer, transmission, hydraulics. You know, seat sensors. Is there a button, a seat, or not? You know, we can kind of look at all that type of stuff over time, uh, in near real time, to kind of make uh, various insights based around the fleet. Interesting. You know, so now, other things that... we look at. Yeah, other things. Yep. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So I was just going to ask, um, so now is that something that's, I guess, standard on the machines that comes with it, or that's like an additional add-on, and can you add that on to uh, your existing fleet already? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I think futuristically we hope it gets to the point where it is a, a comes with every truck that's manufactured. Okay. I would say today it is in between the 30%, 40% of every truck that's manufactured goes out of our facility with onboard telematics. To answer your question from a, can it go on a lift truck in the field? Yes. Mm -hmm. So okay. we can go on anything with a power source, meaning we have it on a Zamboni, we have it on a golf cart, we have it on boom lifts, we have it on other competitive pieces of equipment. So really anything with a power source we can install Yell Vision on. Interesting, really. So on a golf cart, I like that. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. So if if you think about it, most of our customers have a broad range of material handling equipment and other rolling yeah. assets, such as floor scrubbers and other things, and they want one solution to to manage their fleet. Because yeah. with telematics, it's not only yeah, it's not only looking at data. You also have some other features that are instilled in the telematic solution, such as access control. So going back to the floor scrubber. If you put Yell Vision on a floor scrubber, you can control who operates that piece of equipment. So if there's two operators that are certified to operate the, the floor scrubber, you know exactly who's on, on the truck. Okay. You know if he or she performed the maintenance properly, cleaned out, you know, whatever's needed. And for those people like myself that aren't certified or, or not allowed to operate on that, then my access would be denied. And we control that through a proximity card. So okay. most customers today use some form of a proximity card to enter their building, to access doors, to do other things. We can use that same technology to perform somewhat as a key for the or access key 
for the uh, lift trucks or material handling equipment. Uh, very cool. So you can use the actual same access badge that they're already using to get inside the building. That is correct. Ah, uh, that's very nice. So it's something less for them to lose, right? There's another uh, big benefit of Yale Vision, which is the digitization of their OSHA checklist. So from a safety aspect and from wait, how can it benefit an operation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times you go into a site today and they're, they're performing their OSHA checklist on paper. So it looks pretty simplistic. But I would ask the next question is, what happens when there's a failed question, right? Okay. So if the tires aren't in good working condition and you mark it on your sheet, what happens? You know, in, in, in some best cases, you know, somebody's taking action. But in most cases, you're taking that piece of paper, you're filing it on the truck, and then somebody from administration goes around every day or night, mm. picks up those checklists and files them away. Yeah, exactly. So with Yale Vision – you can kind of uh, digitize and also create best practice. So if there's a, we'll go back to the, or if there's a fork that's bent and you want to kind of create a, a, a process around that, you can actually, when they hit the, the fork is bent option on the checklist, it can actually email your maintenance department. It really? can actually go through our mobile device and our app, and now the maintenance person can come out, confirm that that fork is bent, and input notes directly into the app saying, hey, I'm going to replace this fork on this date, or I'm ordering a fork to be replaced. It then captures all this type of stuff in a process. So, when, you know, when an OSHA inspection takes place, you kind of have a full roadmap or a full process uh, or data set that's there that you can walk the uh, OSHA inspector through and how you're taking proactive actions to keep your, uh, your forklift fleet in a safe condition, in an operable condition. Interesting. I like that. So it'll send them. So it automatically sends them an email, which is great. Um, now, what about so if something is wrong uh, with the machine? Now, can you actually use this to kind of uh, like shut down the machine from service and like um, you know not let anybody, I guess, log into it and use the machine? Correct. So a tag out, lock out procedure. Yeah. 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 So so the with with our system, you can somewhat lock out the truck or enable a lockout feature on a few different occurrences. One is on an OSHA checklist, so if there's something that's really pertinent to your operation. Mm -hmm. uh, for an example, if one of your questions, it doesn't have to be OSHA related, you could simply ask, are you the operator under uh, you know, the influence of drugs or alcohol? If, if the operator hits yes, it's going to ask a secondary question, are you sure? <laughs> and if you hit yes, then it's going to not allow you to start the op op you know start the truck. Okay, it could then it could shut, basically lock out the truck. It's going to email a technician or maintenance or supervisor, let them come out and address the situation. You know they're going to make that call if this person's under the influence, mm -hmm. and they can create their own best practice around that that situation. Um, if there is a critical uh, impact that occurs, so let's say. Um, I'm the operator, and I run the truck into a wall or a rack, and the impact is above a, a certain acceptable threshold. Yeah. It can go into a shutdown sequence that way as well. So there's a customizable countdown sequence, and and that's that, that's available as well as the truck needs to be in a a, a very close to stop point, and uh, the truck can go into a shutdown sequence, and then would be send out the notifications both on the app, you know. So again, very similar to a Facebook notification, it pops up on the app. You could then open it up, come to the truck, say, Kevin, you ran into the wall. I'm going to take a picture of the truck. I'm going to put a note in this mm -hmm. impact. I'm going to save it and then re-energize your truck through my proximity card. Got it. Okay. So it kind of – so it avoids the whole thing of, you know, somebody bumping into somebody and then uh, – or bumping into something, hopefully not bumping into somebody, um, but bumping into something and never never kind of reporting it. Um, so that's really good uh, from a safety perspective. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so the accountability is all there with with the proximity card, with the with the app, uh, with the notifications going out. It's all there. Interesting. So now, is the app also since it's cloud based? Now, are you guys putting out updates to that app as um, you guys develop new things? Yeah. So so obviously we're heavily vested in our telemetry system, the Yell Vision system, and the Yell Mobile app. Mm -hmm. So we make we try to keep it in you know top leading edge technology as far as the functionality of the system. 
So we're fairly nimble on improvements to both the online portal as well as the mobile app. So we, we can take it out over the air. So if we make improvements that need to be uh, flashed over the air, we can do so. If it's something that's web-based, we can do that, you know, without affecting any customers. Very interesting. So now what about from a, like, preventative maintenance standpoint? So can the app tell you kind of when you need to do some? We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Preventative maintenance or can that signal to uh, whether it's an in-house department or whether it's a a Yale dealer that services your machines, can that uh, send those signals out as well? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a great call out. So with telematics, you obviously have meters that, that capture the main service meter of the truck. So mm-hmm. any type of serviceable service intervals that are set up, you can do the same thing. So you basically you set up a PM alert. Um, so for any periodic maintenance that needs to take place, you can base it upon the actual hours of the truck versus calendar time. So it kind of streamlines. You're not over PMing a truck, which can cause excessive, you know, cost for the customer. Mm-hmm. And you're making sure that you're not under PM. It. You're doing it right at the proper time that's uh, required by the manufacturer. Definitely. Yep. But notifications, et cetera, can be emailed. Same process. You got it. Oh, okay. Cool. So now, what about uh, you know, like customer success stories? Have you seen where people have really? Um, kind of improve their operation in a big way by implementing these types of things? Yeah, so we have a large range of customers that give us a lot of positive feedback. One to note would be up on our yellvision.com page, which is uh, a case study. It's a video. We have both a white paper and video there that kind of, uh, you know, complements our system, talks about some of the savings they they obtained or, or, or noticed throughout the system. But you know, in general, generally speaking, you know, you'll hear things that are tangible, such as the reduction of avoidable damage. Mm-hmm. You'll hear of uh, safety improvements. Hey, thank you. know, we'll get thank you notes for, you know, we had an OSHA inspection. It was very clean. Uh, we looked very prepared and went through the process. Uh, we get thanks to Yale Vision, that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think in general, there's a lot of positive feedback uh, throughout the system, both on the safety elements and and Let's call it a return on investment per se, uh, as we as we continue to roll out the system. That's great to hear. Yeah, yeah, that was one thing that I was going to ask is you know how big is the uh, safety impact? You know, as, as that's one of the biggest things, of course, uh, with material handling equipment and any moving equipment that you have in distribution center, or manufacturing, whatever the case may be. Um, so it's good to hear that you know there is such a safety improvement. And do you think that? You know, do you see that the employees that are the operators as well, do you see that they're um, very receptive to using the Yale Vision and that it kind of makes their operation better and they enjoy it more? Yeah, I would say it's a mixed message there. So Mm -hmm. in theory, in theory, it's all on how it's delivered to the customer and the end user, right? So so I, I, I try to look at it in the light of, you know, we're trying to look after the operator's best interest. So their safety, we want to make sure that they're on a safe, operable machine. We want to make sure that uh, we understand that we're only putting certified operators on the lift trucks so we can mm-hmm. control that through the access point. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things that we're trying to do to really get behind it. But sometimes, you know, in any telemetry solution, um, going all the way back to that hospital bed, you know, a lot of people yeah. don't want those meters hooked up to them. They don't want... You know they don't want to, They don't want Big Brother or some machine watching them. Um, so I think in our system we we try to complement it with. Uh, it, it's really a value add for the operators. It's a value add for the supervisors, 
And if there's somebody in a higher level sitting in a procurement office, it can help them uh, kind of uh, to, to drive what's the right amount of trucks to purchase for that facility for the future. Got it. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't think about it from that perspective, too, from the purchasing um, perspective. Um, so, yep. so now what about in terms of implementation? Is it something that's fairly simple program to implement in an operation, or does it take some time to do to get it all up and running? Yeah. Yeah, so to give you an idea of scale, you know, uh, the Yale Vision solution is basically has surpassed the 50,000 unit meaning that we have quite a few sites implemented on our solution. Um, you know, obviously back in 2014, this phone call could have been a little different as far as the implementation process, mm -hmm. but I would say we've learned it and uh, it is, it is, there's cooperation between our dealers, there's cooperation or, or participation amongst the customer, and then we have an implementation team that makes it fairly an easy process. Uh, picture it as, you know, we're putting, if you, I, I love these little analogies, as you can tell, but picture it as we're putting an onboard cell phone on the lift truck. So it's as simple as activating the phone. So now you're taking your phone number, it's going live, and okay. you're now communicating to a cloud, and you're communicating all these little small SMS data text going out to the, to the cloud. So fa fairly easy to connect. Um, the participation amongst the site is we need to load their operators. We need to load their desired checklist because mm -hmm. it's very customizable. Um, okay. And then, you know, we, we kind of take them live. We work with the customer, make sure they're getting – there's no reason to overcomplicate things. You know, what does the customer want to look at? What do they want to manage? And, and kind of dialing in their, their dashboards and their reports to make them insightful for them. And – some customers, large corporations, they want they want it done this way. So they want to see X, Y, and Z, where some other customers are a little more nimble and they want to see, hey, I want this site manager to tell you exactly what they want. So it's, you know, each site's a little different, but we've we've kind of uh, we've kind of been through the implementation pains of years ago and have kind of perfected it or at least come close to it. Okay, very cool. So now, is there anything else that we should know about uh, Yale's motor power and telemetry uh, arm? Um, I would I would encourage anybody listening to the podcast to go out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go to our Yale.com public facing page, walk through the motor power selector tool, make sure they're kind of, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to kind of second guess you. You know, everybody does things right if it's their way, but really, you know, just kind of take a second look. You know, are you running the right mode of power option in your in your uh, fleet of forklifts? Mm -hmm. So th that's the question to ask and and encourage you know encourage you reach out to your local Yale dealer. Um, kind of get some guidance there. Use them as a consultative measure, I guess is the best way mm -hmm. to put it. Uh, and then on the telematic side, if, if you're not utilizing a telematic solution a day, it doesn't matter what type of material handling equipment you use, reach out to your Yale dealer. Uh, again, go to our YaleVision.com page. There's a lot of good marketing content there. Uh, learn more because there's a lot of uh, easy ROI type of things that take place, you know, saving on paper, saving on time learning about your operation, and there's a lot of things that can be stated for that. So uh, I would just say, uh, in general, educate yourself as much as possible on the new technology as it, as it comes to market. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I think the point of that you're saying that you can implement the Yale Vision on any type of machine, whether it's Yale or not, um, I think that's huge. Um, I didn't I didn't actually realize coming into the interview that you could do that. So um, I think that's really, really key. And like you said, you know, getting to know more about your operation um, is really, really important, especially as, you know, customers are demanding larger, um, better and better service levels. So you want to optimize as much as possible. And, you know, utilizing something like Yale Vision um, just to see, you know, what's really happening uh, because you can't be, can't be everywhere all the time. Um, so being yeah. able to see that and then obviously, you know, the reduction in um, safety incidents, like you said, I mean, that's that's huge right there. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it sounds like you guys have something really great um, going on. So, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what other uh, updates you guys might push out for that as well. Um, and we'll definitely...
definitely uh, put more information about all that stuff on the newwarehouse.com to go along with this podcast episode. Uh, so, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the New Warehouse podcast. You've been listening to the New Warehouse podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.